What's up guys, it's Leet Coder. This is Leet Code 53 Maximum Subarray. In this problem, we're given an array such as this one, and we have to return the largest sum made up from a subarray of the array. And the subarray, as it says here, is a contiguous part of an array, meaning that this is a subarray, but this is not a subarray because this has a gap in it. Now in this case, the largest sum from a subarray is six, because this has a sum of six. First, let's think of our brute force solution. It'll be to check every possible subarray and see which one has the maximum sum. So here we can go like this and so on. This is going to be an n cubed algorithm and obviously it's really slow. So how do we solve this better than a brute force solution? The first thought I had was to use a sliding window algorithm. So we start off with negative two, then we get to this one, and now we see, okay, one is actually greater than negative two, so we can just ignore this negative two. Then we get to this negative three, so we're gonna include it in our subarray here. Then we get to this four, and we see, well, four is actually greater than the sum of one and negative three, so we can just ignore this part of the array. So now we have four. Then we get to this negative one. Now we have this, and we keep going like this. And the main idea here is that we can ignore parts of the array that actually subtract from the maximum output. For example, this here is going to be negative four, right? And this here is going to be negative one. So we don't want these parts of the array included in our output. The maximum is here. Now using a sliding window works, but it's tricky because you have to keep track of the left side and the right side of the array. And coding that can get tricky and you have to backtrack sometimes and do some complicated logic. So what's a better way of storing information we've already seen? And the answer to that is called dynamic programming. Our dynamic programming data structure is going to be an array, the same length as nums here. And we're going to store one more variable called output and we're initializing it to the first element of nums here. And so we go through and we go through for each num in nums, we do some algorithm. The first element, we don't really do anything because it's just the first element. So we're just going to add negative two here. Then we get to the second element one. And this is where we do our algorithm. What we want to do is we want to get the max of the current number or the current number plus the previous number in our data structure. So it's going to be the max of num or num plus previous. In this case, it'll be just one here. And after we compute this, we also check if the current number in our data structure is bigger than the output. And if so, we change output to be that current number. So now we get to the negative three and we run this algorithm and we see, okay, negative three plus one is bigger than negative three. Now we put negative two here. Then we get to this four and we say, okay, is four bigger than four plus negative two, and it is. Now we put the four here. Now that we've seen this four, our output's actually gonna be four. Okay, then we get to this negative one. We run the algorithm, it's gonna be three. Then we get to this two. We run the algorithm, it's gonna be five. Now we replace the four here with five. Then we get to this one, and now, okay, it's gonna be six here. So now we replace the output with six. Then we get to this negative five here and we run the algorithm, it's gonna be one. Then we get to this four and we run the algorithm, it's gonna be five. So we can kind of see how the algorithm works. It's just getting the maximum possible sum by comparing either the previous number or the previous sum with the current number. And when you do that, you end up actually ignoring this part of the array and you end up ignoring this part of the array because these are actually negative numbers that are subtracting from the output instead of adding to it. You see this algorithm by the time it reaches this one here, the sum is the maximum at this six. And so in terms of time complexity, we have O of N because we just go through the array once. In terms of space complexity, we have O of N because we use another data structure to store the array. Although technically you could do it in O of one if you just update nums, the original array as you go. 
instead of storing an extra variable. Personally, I don't like to do that because you're modifying the parameter and that's generally not good programming practice. There's one follow-up to this, and that is can you figure out a solution by using divide and conquer? Divide and conquer would be splitting up the array to this and this and getting the maximum from here, which would be four, getting the maximum from here, which would be four, adding them together, but oh wait, you can see that actually doesn't work. So what you actually have to do, and this is a little tricky, is you have to split up the array, not into two, but into three, like this. And then you have to get the maximum from this side, which is four, the maximum from this side, which is four as well. And then you have to get the maximum sum on the right side of this left side. So in other words, it would be four here. So let's put that over here. And then you have to get the maximum on the left side of this right array here, which is going to be three. And then you have to get the middle number, negative one, and add them together. So the output's going to be the maximum of the left max, right max, left sum plus mid plus right sum. So in this case, it's going to be the maximum of four, this is six, and this is four, which equals six. And so you can see it's kind of unintuitive to do it this way, because you have to keep track of the left side and the right side and the middle, and the right side of the left side and the left side of the right side, it gets confusing. My recommendation is to stick to dynamic programming because the algorithm is fairly straightforward, although it might be difficult to come up with. And with that said, if you found this helpful so far, please give a like and a subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get to the code. Okay, so I'm only gonna show the dynamic programming solution because it's the most straightforward to understand. So first we have our output, which is going to be initialized to the first element of nums. And then we have our data structure and I'll just call this sums. We'll initialize it to just nums at zero for the beginning. Now for i in range one to length of nums, we get our num here, so it's nums at i. And now we run our algorithm. So we say sums.append maximum value of num or sums at i minus one plus num. So there's our algorithm there. And then we just check if sums at i is greater than output, output equals sums at i. And we just return output at the end. So we got the right answer for all the example test cases here. And let's just submit. And we got the right answer. So it's a pretty straightforward algorithm when you look at the code. And one optimization for space that you can make, like I said earlier, is to use nums instead of creating a new variable sums. And just know for dynamic programming, the idea is to store the previous result in some data structure. And in this case, since we're just going through an array of n elements and we just need to have a sum, an array of n elements for our data structure works just fine. And that's it. Let me know down in the comments if there's any problem you'd like to see next and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. See you next time.